Hello everyone, I've had a request to do a sermon video for uh, children uh, concerning the Bible storybook. Uh, when I was about 11 years old, I wanted, we didn't go to church. Uh, I was expecting and wanting some kind of a ball, baseball, basketball, football, something like that. But what I got instead was a uh, children's uh, Bible stories. And so I want to read you um one from this it's my favorite it was it was the probably my favorite in this book uh it's where solomon prays for wisdom and understanding solomon's reign began well because he sought god's favor and blessing in all that he did solomon loved the lord and sought to obey god's commandments as his father david had done before him but because no house had been built yet for the name of the lord solomon and the people were offering sacrifices and burnt incense at certain high places Soon after he became king, Solomon went to the great high place at Gibeon and offered a thousand burnt offerings to God upon the great altar which stood there. That night when Solomon lay down to sleep at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Then God said to his servant, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said to the Lord, You showed your servant David, my father, great kindness because he walked before you in truth and in uprightness and righteousness of heart. And you kept for him this great kindness and gave him a son to sit on the throne. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people that I might discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this so great a people? And children, you can find this in First Kings one, First Kings three one through twenty eight. It pleased the Lord that the Solomon had prayed in this humble and earnest fashion. God heard Solomon's prayer, and said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked for a long life for yourself, or for riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for understanding and discern between good and bad. Behold, I will do according to your words. Lo, I will give you wise and understanding hearts, so there shall be none like you before you, and there shall be none like you after you. And I will also give you the things which you did not ask for, riches and honor, so there will be not be any among the kings like you all your life. And if you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David did, then I will lengthen your days. When Solomon spoke, he knew that the Lord had been had spoken to him in a dream. When Solomon awoke, he knew that the Lord had spoken to him in a dream. Then he arose and went back to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings to God and made a great feast for all his servants. Very soon, Solomon, King Solomon had a special opportunity to make use of the wisdom and understanding which God had promised him. Two women came before the king, each the mother of a newborn baby, and asked the king to judge their case. One of the women told this story. She said, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth to a child when she was living there. Three days later, this old woman also bore a child, and we were alone in the house, and this woman's child died in the night because she lay on it, and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while I was asleep and laid it in her bosom and laid the, her dead child in my house. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my child, behold, it was dead. And when I examined it closely in the morning, behold, it was not my son that I had born. But the other woman told a different story. She said to the first woman, no, the living child is my son and the dead child is your son. But the first woman said, no, the dead child is your son and the living child is my son. Thus they spoke before King Solomon. Then the king said of to the disputing women. One of you says this son lives and, the, and your son is dead. The other says, no, your son is dead and my son is the one that's alive. And the king said to one of his servants, bring me a sword. And a sword was brought before the king and the, Solomon said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman to which the living child belongs said to the king, for she yearned for her child. 
Oh, my Lord, give her the living child and no way harm it. But the deceitful woman whose child was dead said, Let it neither be mine nor yours, divide it. And King Solomon answered and said, Give the living child to the first woman and in no way harm it, for she is the child's mother. And all of Israel heard of the judgment which the king had given, and they feared the king, for they saw wisdom of God was in him to do justice. So uh, I love that story. I loved it all these years. Uh, and it made me want wisdom at 11 years old. I didn't even know, we didn't even go to church, and I didn't know anything about the Lord's ways, but I've been seeking after wisdom since I'm 11, 11 years old. You may say, well, Brother Dale, you don't have much, but I am trying. Uh, I also have a video on this uh, to adults, so uh, the mothers and dads can check it out. And uh, I may have mentioned it in more than one video. But until next time, may God bless you, and you keep reading. I'm in the Old Testament, and that is harder to be understood, but it does have some good stories in there, and I hope you enjoy it, kids.